Um, can you just start off by telling us who you are and where we are? I'm Tom Probert. Um, I think you've already spoke to Dad. Um, so we are fifth generation here. Um, we're sat in Hop Yard at the moment. Um, I think Dad put this Hop Yard up in the 60s. Um, and it's still standing, so he can't have done a bad job. Um, and we're at Church Farm, Western Beggard. So tell us what your earliest memory is then of growing up on a hop farm. My earliest memory probably is Martin, um, who still comes, although he's intermittently been coming. And we worked it out earlier today, actually, that I must have been about four. Um, and I can remember him picking me up by the scruff of the neck. Um, and I just thought he was a giant. Um, and that memory has just stayed with me for, for well, forever. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um... What was it like growing up as a child here on this farm, sort of hot? Oh, you can't fling questions at me like that. <laughs> what was it like growing up as a child? Um, well, you don't get to farm. see your dad very much on a farm. Um, I think dad was very busy building the farm up. Um, I've consciously, from that, tried to spend more time with my boys. Um, heaven knows why. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's fun though, because there's not many jobs where you can actually go and be in your dad's workplace and sort of see what he does. And I don't think we intend to farm, we just inherit the kind of, I don't know, the whole, the way it is. Um, it isn't something, it's not an industry a lot of people set out to want to do, we just grow into it. Um, and it, it isn't a lazy growing into it, it's just you become evolved, I think. Um, and you don't know you're doing it. And uh, my little boys don't know they're doing it. They just enjoy it. They want to be with dad. They, all they want to do is play with tractors. Um, and it's nice. Um, I'd love for them to do whatever they want. And if they want to farm, <laughs> more fool them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it grows on you. Did you um, ever have any kind of moments where you were really anti it, where you thought you wanted to do something completely You've different? been speaking to dad, haven't you? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I was um, 18, I applied to the RAF. Um, I suppose every schoolboy's dream of uh, being a fighter pilot. Sorry, that's my fault, Tom. I, I, my voice is over your, your arm. All right, okay. Just do that. So when, yeah. when you were okay. 18, sorry. That's my fault. So tell us about when you had a bit of maybe a conflict about whether to be a farmer or not. I, sw I suppose it was kind of... Um, trying to stamp my own authority on my destiny I suppose um, and I've always been fascinated by aircraft and military aircraft and when I was about 18 um, I applied to the RAF to be a fighter pilot every schoolboy's dream um, unfortunately I was a few percent low on one of the tests so didn't get through into that um, and then pursued um, engineering because I'm fascinated by nuts and bolts which is which is helpful on a hop farm um, so did engineering at college um, up at Harper Adams and then applied that to sort of working back here on the farm. So he did mention that you went off to New Zealand and, that yeah. was where, and you sort of tell us about mending the brush machine there. And yeah, there. Um, it was just, I think everybody has a bit of a travel bug in them. I exercised mine in New Zealand. Um, I kind of knew they had hops out there, so I thought, well, it'd be interesting to see them. So I sort of arranged my sort of route around so that I'd be in the hop picking area out hop picking. Um, happened upon a hop farm. Um, <laughs> asked if I could have a look around and they said, yeah, knock yourself out. So I had a look around and then um, it was a bit awkward because I had to ask the manager. I said, well, it doesn't look to be going very well. Um, and any reason for that? And he said, well, it's the first time we've ever used the machine. And he had his nose out of joint a bit and was like, well, what do you know about it? And I said, well, we run the same machine at home. Um, and they said, well, can I hang around for the rest of the day? And then three months later, I left. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it, it worked out great for both of us. I got some great experience on a New Zealand hop farm and I helped them run their machine. And then subsequently, um, I went back out there the following year, not intending to. Um, but, yeah, um, it just worked out that they wanted me to go back and... Uh, I wasn't going to say no. So when going back again a little bit, when you were kind of younger, what was the kind of set up here with sort of hot picking time? You know, obviously it was all mechanised and everything by then, but what is there much difference between when you were kind of around in your teens and how it is now? Um, the biggest change will have been when we had the fire. Um, so that's obviously a massive change. That aside, um, the machine that you filmed and we, we're running down there is your, well, parts of it, the original machine that Dad put in back in the 50s. 
so none of that's really changed. Um, the way we get them out of the field has changed slightly, but not greatly. Um, uh, little tiny bits, but no, generally since hand picking, nothing much has really changed. Um, perhaps it should. <laughs> it still looks sort of fairly kind of basic, but really efficient, doesn't it? With the chopping them down with the knife and it's all yeah. fairly basic. Yeah, it is. It it's still quite manually intensive. But compared to picking each individual hop off a plant, it's it's highly mechanised. Um, yeah, hand picking the, the the staffing quantities on the acreage we're growing would be unimaginable nowadays, um, and hence it's all done by machines. So yeah. What was your first kind of um, role on the farm when you kind of was it when you came back from New Zealand? When did you sort of? Um, what was your first kind of job? Well, I suppose growing up, as you become sort of more able to do stuff, you pick up little bits of pieces here and there. Um, with term time starting and overlapping with hot picking, I could never do a full hot picking, but I'd be zooming around on a trailer or thinking I was helping somewhere, I'm sure. Um, and I suppose really I wouldn't have really got stuck into it until I'd finished college um, so that I didn't have school terms and college terms getting in the way. Um, and uh, yeah, just sort of adopted and gradually stepped into whatever role. Um, the last few years I've perhaps taken over more of the, the sort of decision making and, and day to day and well, it's a partnership still and I couldn't do it without dad. Um, but yeah, I don't know really, what was the question? <laughs> What was your first kind of job really on the farm, but it was more organic than that? Yeah, it is really. You yeah. don't sort of, yeah, it isn't like I was employed. It's It goes back to that growing up on a farm. You don't kind of suddenly get dropped in. You just gradually build. One day you learn to drive a tractor. Um, and then you just, it just, like you said, it evolves. Um, and you gradually step into different things. Um, yeah. One thing your did, dad did tell us was he said that there was a point where you, you were kind of in two minds about whether to carry on with the hops and he told you to make your bloody mind up or not, as he said. Yeah, that was probably about just before lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> um, just about at the end of every hop picking, we're like, bloody hops, I'm never picking hops again. You're going to stick your hops up your backside. Um, yeah, it's just a tempest flare in hop picking as well, and it's... It's tiring, it's hard work, and you wonder why on earth you're doing it. Um, but another year comes and you carry on. Um, and we're heavily invested in the wire work in the fields and the machinery. Um, so you're kind of in it for the long haul, really. It's not something you can jump in and out of. Um, markets fluctuate, but hopefully we can sort of, we can work through that and uh, take the hit when we have to. Um, but yeah, you soldier on. Great. About halfway through answering a question, I forget what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> so I just babble. <laughs> was there like a decisive moment? It seemed like he said that you had a bit, you were wondering about whether to get a, be done with hops at all. or. or well, I suppose that. when the fire happened, it was, it's do or die. And we've had a few hop yards fall on the, on the floor when sort of main wires fail and it's all on the floor and that, you kind of think, why are we bothering? Um, but it's it's hardships that you kind of it's all character building stuff and that it's what life is. Um, what did Forrest Gump say? <laughs> um, life's like a box of chocolates. Um, some of the chocolates you're not going to like, but you've just got to get on with it, I guess. And what do you kind of what what's your kind of plans really in terms of hops? Are you kind of expanding or? We've got an acreage that we can just about cope with comfortably, ish. Um, it'd be tempting to expand um, but we pay tax at the moment and we've got enough stress as it is so I kind of think why why do I want to expand I'm the most um, uh, non-ambitious person I could meet or I could imagine I just I, I don't understand ambition that drives people beyond what they really need um, so yeah we're happy with the acreage we've got um, Saying that, we are putting one yard up, which was, it was traditionally a hop yard. Um, and probably when the market had a downturn, we took it out. So we fully intend putting that one back in. Um, the irony is we've got a setup that will cope with quite a bit more acreage. 
but I'd rather do what we're doing comfortably than stretch ourselves. So, yeah. And what, what do you think it is that makes people have this kind of affinity with hops? What is a, there seems to be this kind of real, um, I don't know, every, everyone you speak to says, oh, hops, or oh, do you think it was only more in the days of hand picking that people had this nostalgia and this relationship, or do you feel you have a relationship with hops that you don't um, have with apples or something? Or? They're quite unique. Um, geographically unique, globally and, and here. They only grow them in the southeast and sort of in this area of the country. Um, globally, they only grow on certain latitudes, whether that's north or south of the um, equator. Personally, my affinity to hops is probably bloody-mindedness and stubbornness. There's only 50 of us left in the country doing it, and it, it's quite a niche thing to be involved in. Um, it's a strange way of looking at it, but yeah, it's... It's nice to be doing something that's a little bit more respected than broad acre farming. Or perhaps not respected, that's the wrong word, but just a bit more unusual. Um, they're a challenge. It would be a lot easier to do broad acre, far like arable farming. Um, and I think everybody else's affinity, I think because we're from Hereford and we talk to people from Hereford, most people you speak to know what a hop is or know someone that knows someone that's picked hops you step outside of the hop areas and people aren't quite so sure what they are other than things they see above um, bars in pubs and things so perhaps it's a real sort of colloquial type affinity we have um i don't know why i like them <laughs> i wish i didn't <laughs> So tell us a little bit about who you've got working here. Um, we've got quite a mixture. We rely heavily on foreign workers, mainly, well, all Polish um, and one Welshman. Um, but the Polish was uh, a spin-off from, it was actually called Hops, which was Harvesting Opportunities Scheme. Um, and we were getting agency staff from them probably 15, 20 years ago. Um, and then a few wanted to come back um, sort of on a on a one to one rather than through the scheme. Uh, Shremek was one of them um, who is running the machine now, and Shremek now brings a group of his own friends, family, and whoever he can piece together. Um, and I'd be lost without him. He's my agency for game work. He speaks the language. His English is fantastic. He understands the machine. He understands every job there is to do on the farm. You tell him to do something once, and it's done. And he's he's my right hand man. Um, and I would be lost without him. Um, he just makes everything tick so much easier. Um, it's uh, you can't really quantify what he's worth. Um, it would be I would not look forward to hot picking without him, not at all. Um, and then we've got a few English people that um, they're part time throughout the year, helping us grow in the hops as well, and they come and help. Um, and like I said, Martin the Welshman, which I'm eager for you to get on film as well, Martin the Giant. Um, but yeah, heavily rely on the Polish. And um, what what, do you, what do you, are you worried about the future with the whole kind of Brexit thing and how all that might change? What's your feelings on uh, labour in or are you not the B trying word. to think yeah. about that? <laughs> um, I don't think Brexit is having an impact as such. We were getting Polish workforce before they were even in the European Union. So Brexit shouldn't really have an effect. Um, freedom of movement of people is probably going to be a reality in the future anyway the crux is exchange rate and this year the exchange rate is nowhere near as good as it was last year and the year before that um so they're all asking for more money already and to be honest they're worth it uh we get repeat people coming back um and they can help out the new people coming as well um Shremek, with his recruiting sets the bar quite high so he always brings good people anyway and they are worth paying a bit more um so Exchange rate is going to be our, our biggest enemy. The, you know, your team yeah. and fostering a bit of um, community spirit. Yeah, well, like I said, we used to be with the hop scheme um, and it just became a great big tick list of what was expected and, and it just became a little bit regimented somehow. Um, and we had a couple of the people wanted to come back following years um, and we made private con or they made private contact to us and came back. And Shremek being one of them, and we've kept quite a good relationship with Shremek. Um, and he finds us staff and Shremek's a friend of mine now it's not he doesn't work for us he's a friend that comes to work um, and all the people he brings they treat it it's not a holiday but they take holiday from their jobs and they come over 
and I think they enjoy it. Um, but it's it's nice to have a little bit more camaraderie and be amongst them and working rather than just throwing out orders and expecting the minions to do it all. Um, and the other day, oh, I'd said to Deb, it'd be really nice if we could just have like an old fashioned cookhouse and just be able to have meals all together. And it doesn't really work because we're never all sort of stopped at the same time. Um, but I think most Fridays we'll probably have a bit of a get together and a drink um, and just all sit down and just take a deep breath. <laughs> Um, and it'd be nice just to go back to the olden days of like a big pot of tea out in the hop yard and just see some smiles on faces and not just frowning and sweating. <laughs> um, but no, it'd be nice just to just make it enjoyable. Um, we're rushing around too much, um, which I don't set a great example of not rushing around when the sweat's pouring off me. But yeah, it'd be nice to get back to that. Get, just just step off the treadmill for a minute and just relax and realise why you're doing it. Um, yeah, I suppose. Um, so the idea is to capture stories and memories yeah. about hops, which is a big part of the culture of Herefordshire. Yeah. Do you think that's an important thing to do? And if so, yeah. why? Yeah, I think so. Um, in fact, someone sent a message to Dad the other day. Of, I think it was hop picking in 1925. And it was just nice to see. Um, it was just, yeah. And I think if you don't capture stuff, it's gone. It's like before and after photos. We always think about doing them after. You think, oh, I wish I took a before photo. So yeah, no, I think it's nice to capture it. Um, sure. Yeah.